All right, day four of 5152, just more practice. So no new material, just more practice. Okay, so this first part right here says, given that cosecant's four, fine, and then I ask you to find four things, right? So the first one is, is the secant of 90 minus theta. So the secant of the complement is how you say that. So what you have to know is it's co-function. So what's important is to know what secant of 90 minus theta is equivalent to. It is equivalent to cosecant of theta. They are the same thing. So if you know that, then this first one is extremely easy because it is 4. It's the same thing as cosecant of theta. Sine, you know, is the reciprocal of cosecant. So it is 1 over 4. Next, it says cosine of the complement. What's cosine of the complement? I always do that. Cosine of the complement equal to? It's equal to sine. So it is the same exact answer as sine, one-fourth. The last one asked me for cosine squared. Where have we seen cosine squared before? We've seen it in the first trig identity. Sine squared of theta plus cosine squared of theta is equal to 1. So what we need to do is we need to solve for this, right? So that means I have the 1 in the equation already. I need to know what sine squared is. Well, sine is 1 fourth, so sine squared is that squared. So I'm going to do 1 fourth squared plus cosine squared is equal to 1. This is 1 16th plus cosine squared is equal to 1. And then subtract 1 16th from both sides. So I have cosine squared of theta is equal to 1 minus 1 16th is 15 sixteenths. And that's your answer right there. Once again, you're not square rooting because I asked you to find cosine squared, not cosine. Okay, simplify this expression as a single term. So first thing I notice is that I have sine of 35 secant of 55 cosine of 35, 55, 35, 55, 35, 55. They're not all the same, and I need them to be the same. So I have to say to myself, how can I get them to be the same or what do I what can I do to make them the same so I say what do I know about 35 and 45 or sorry 35 and 55 35 and 55 are complementary right they add to 90 so that means that they're replaceable so I'm going to look and say is there more 35s or 9 or 55s there's more 35 so all the 35s are going to stay I'm going to get rid of everything with the 55 in it now I'm lightly crossing through it because it's not obviously just disappearing I want this to be a 35 too. So whenever I use something complementary, I use its co-function. What's, co what's secant's co-function? Cosecant. I want this to be a 35. What's sine's co-function? Cosine. Notice I'm not asking which it's reciprocal. I'm asking you what it's its co-function. What's cotangent's co-function? Tangent. So now I'm going to pretend it started off this way. I'm going to say, okay, now what can I do? Well, Signs I leave, so I'm going to keep sine of 35 the way it is. I like to put those over 1, but I'll wait just a second. Cosecant I'll replace. Cosecant is the same thing as 1 over sine of 35. And I'll put this over 1 being like, oh yeah, I know what I'm doing. Times cosines I leave. Cosines I leave. And I have that plus sign. Signs I leave. Tangent I'll change. Tangent I'll change to sine over cosine. Cosines I leave. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and clean this up. Now remember, this is separated by addition, so I'm going to work on the left-hand side first and say what can I do on the left-hand side. So I have a sine of 35 over sine of 35. And then that's the only thing that cancels out. So in my numerator, remember this becomes a 1 and a 1. I have 1 times 1 times cosine of 35 times cosine of 35, which is cosine squared of 35. And then in my denominator, I have 1 times 1 times 1 times 1, which is just 1. And I have plus. Here, cosine over 35 and cosine over 35 cancel. And then I have sine times sine times 1, which is sine squared. 1 times 1 times 1, which is 1. So now I have 
cosine of 35 times sine, or sorry, plus sine of 35. So it's cosine squared plus sine squared. This is your first trig identity. If you're like, no, it's sine squared of theta, it's the same angle, right? 35 and 35 are the same angle. So this is equivalent to two, one. Okay. The last three, I thought there was before. The last three are establishing identities. So we're going to establish the identity. Make sure you circle the side you start with and circle your final step. Nah, I don't like that. Check your final step. Okay. So here's our first one. We have to decide which side is more complicated. I don't think that's up for debate. It's clearly this side. Okay. So now I have to say, what can I do? All right. So I'm going to look at it and I'm going to say, just like in the last problem, I can keep the sign and then change cosine to one over sine. And I'm like, ooh, that's good because then the signs will cancel just like in the last problem. So that's what I'm going to start off by doing. I'm going to say keep the sine of theta, change cosecant to one over sine of theta. And I'm going to put this over one just because I like the balanced way it looks. And I have the plus sign. Okay, so that's I know that's going to become a one, which is good. And then I have sine squared times secant squared. So I say, okay, I could leave the sine squared alone. What can I change the secant squared to? Secant's equivalent to one over cosine. So I can change it to one over cosine. How is that going to help me? Well, then that's sine squared times cosine. That becomes tangent squared, which is good. That could become something completely different. So I'm going to do that. So I'll keep this as sine squared of theta over one times, and I'll change this to one over cosine squared. Okay, so let's see what we have now. Sine over sine is one, then I have one times one, which is one plus, and then I have sine squared over cosine squared, which becomes tangent squared. So I can write it as tangent squared right now, or I can write it as sine squared over cosine squared. I don't want to lose anyone, so I'll do that. So now I have one plus tangent squared. If you skipped that step right here, it's okay. I'm okay with that. All right, so now I look to see what I'm trying to get. I'm trying to get secant squared. I'm like, wait, this is a trig identity here, right? This is a one squared and a tangent squared. I don't have my trig identities written, so I'm going to go ahead and write them up here. Sine squared of theta plus cosine of squared of theta is equal to one. Tangent squared of theta plus one is equal to secant squared of theta. 1 plus cotangent squared of theta equals cosecant squared of theta. All right, there's my trig identities. So 1 plus tangent. 1 plus tangent is the same thing as secant squared, and that's what I was trying to get. So this one was actually not so bad. Okay, let's try the next one. Next one, what side's more complicated? I would go with this fraction. Okay, and if I tried to go with the right-hand side, I can be like, oh, I can change that to 1 over cosine squared and the other one to 1 over sine squared, and then I have cosine squared and sine squared, and it just gets out of control. So what I'm going to do instead, I'm going to do it like that one that we had that was pretty tricky in our last set here, and I'm going to say, okay, well, my sines and cosine is, I'm going to leave it right now. But I'm gonna, I know that I can change that tangent and cotangent, so that's what I'm going to do. Okay, so tangent becomes sine of theta over cosine of theta. Then I have minus cotangent becomes cosine of theta minus sine of theta. And then I have all over, ooh, then I have all over sine cosine. Now, please realize you cannot cancel anything out right now can't be like, ooh, son, you can't do that. Please don't think you can, okay? All right, so now I say, okay, well, why did I even write those as fractions? Well, it's because I can make it one fraction if I get a common denominator. So I'm gonna do that next. I'm gonna get my common denominator, and I'm gonna say my common denominator is sine cosine. So I'm gonna multiply this by cosine over cosine. I'll multiply this by sine over sine. Okay, so I'm going to first concentrate just on this for a second and write down what that is. My new denominator, I, don't, I should probably uncircle it, but that's what I'm going to look at. I'll highlight it so you can see it, and then I'll erase the highlight. 
Okay, so I'm going to concentrate on getting that. So my new denominator is sine, cosine, or cosine, sine. It doesn't matter. And then I have sine times sine, which is sine squared, minus cosine times cosine, which is cosine squared. And then I have that all over this sine cosine, right? I have it all over this sine cosine. But instead of doing all over that sine cosine, what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to once again say divided by sine cosine is the same thing as times 1 over sine cosine. I'm going to do that since it's like so many fractions within fractions. We'll see if it helps. Okay, so now I have this. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to say, all right, what, what can I do next, right? Well, what I can do is that I can multiply these. It's two fractions. I can multiply them. And I have to say, wait a minute, do I even want to do that? Is that going to be helpful? Well, I need to make two separate things. Right now I have two separate things, but I or two, two things being subtracted, but I have two fractions. So I'm going to try to make this one fraction. I'm going to multiply them out. That's going to be my thought process. So in order to do that, I need to multiply my numerators. That's sine squared of theta minus cosine squared of theta over. And then I have sine cosine times sine cosine, which is sine squared cosine squared. At least it now it's one fraction. Okay, so now I'm saying, all right, what am I trying to get? I'm trying to get secant squared. Secant squared is the same thing as, I'm going to write it over here and erase it. Oh. 1 over cosine squared, and this is the same thing as 1 over sine squared. So that's what I'm trying to get, right? So I say, okay, how can I get that? And I have to think about this. How can I get that? And I say, okay, I need a 1 over cosine squared. And I say, I see a cosine squared, but, oh, goodness, do this. I see a cosine squared, but there's only one term in the denominator. I want you to realize that. Sine squared, cosine squared is one term. There's no addition or subtraction. So I can divide, right? If I divide sine squared divided by sine squared over cosine squared, I get 1 over cosine squared. Now, if I do divide this also, because I have to divide both, I have the minus. And then I have a cosine squared over sine squared times cosine squared. The cosine squareds cancel, and I have 1 minus or 1 over sine squared of theta. That's exactly what I was trying to get right? So now I have exactly what I was trying to get, and it is secant squared minus cosecant squared. Oops. Was that one easy? No. I think it was pretty difficult, but I think it's good to, you know, try the harder ones out together. All right, last one we're going to do for practice together. Nope, there's two more. My bad. I don't know how to count today. Okay, so next one that we're going to do for practice together. This side's more complicated. All right, so I look and I say, okay, what can I do? I'm trying to get it to be one term, so I need to subtract these in order to subtract them. I can't subtract them right now. So can I make these fractions? Sure can. I can make cosecant 1 over sine times, because it's multiplication right here. This is 1 over cosine. and then the minus sign, and then cotangent, I can make cosine over sine. Okay. Okay. So now I say, wait a minute, I need to get a common denominator. So please realize also that I can make this one fraction right now. I'm going to do that in a step instead of just um, assume that you guys realize that. So that's one fraction, and then minus cosine over sine. Okay. All right, and if you skip that step that I just wrote down, because you're like, yeah, I know that. That's fine. Okay, so I need to make this one fraction. Realize this is one thing. That's two different things. So I need a common denominator. So I go my common denominator. My common denominator is sine cosine. This is already a sine cosine. This is not, so I'm going to have to multiply it by cosine over cosine. So I'm going to write down my one fraction that I have. My common denominator is sine cosine or cosine sine, same thing. And then I have 1 here, and then I have the minus, and then these two have to multiply out. Cosine times cosine is cosine squared. OK, 
Okay, so let's see what I'm trying to get. I'm trying to get tangent. Tangent is sine over cosine. If I want to write it down, I can, but I just have to erase it when I'm done. It's sine over cosine. So cosine's already down here, so that's gonna be good. That means I have to get rid of this sine. But I need a sine in my numerator, which I don't have in my numerator. So I say, oh, my numerator has to change. This has to change. Trig identity. One minus cosine squared. One minus cosine squared is the same thing as sine squared. It's wonderful. It's exactly what I wanted it to be. So I'm going to change that to sine squared. And then now I can look for any common factors. Please realize in my numerator I have a sine times sine, and in my denominator I have a sine times cosine. It's factors. So I can cancel out this sine with one of these signs. I'm left with sine over cosine, which is tangent. I liked that one. Okay. Now is this the last one? All right, this is the last one now. Okay, so the last one here. What side's more complicated? The fraction's more complicated. All right, so what can I do here? Secant squared divided by tangent. Secant squared divided by tangent. So right now, it is division. I want it to be multiplication. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write it out like third grade math to see if it helps me because I know I can change secant squared to 1 over cosine squared, but then I'm going to have fraction in a fraction. I just want to avoid that. So I'm going to write it out like third grade math really quickly so I can think more. Okay, so I already said this. I can write secant squared as 1 over cosine squared, so that's a fraction. And then I have divided by tangent is sine over cosine. Okay, now I don't divide by fractions. I multiply by the reciprocal, so I'm going to do that instead. Times cosine over sine. All right, so this is two fractions being multiplied. I need to be one, so can I simplify this fraction? Yes, I can. Cosine and a cosine cancels. So now I have 1 over cosine times 1 over sine which is secant, cosecant, exactly what I was trying to get, or secant, cosecant, yeah. Wonderful. I like that one, too. Okay. All right, that's it for our practice together.